it's everywhere. We're here in a yard and you can find a little bit of everything here. Here's a doorknob, a piece of cement, a little girl's teddy bear. Just behind me are two cars that the tornado picked up and threw just like they were toys. What the burglars are doing is they come knock on your door, ring the doorbell, and if they think no one is home, then they kick in the door, sometimes surprising sleeping homeowners. Two groups, same clothes, but are they held to the same standard? Marissa. Cynthia, this is still a very active and chaotic scene. Police have closed off all access to Ward Parkway Mall. Also, a portion of State Line here at 86th Street is closed. We know that sometime after 3 this afternoon, someone opened fire inside the mall. We're told the shooting started somewhere on the east side and moved here toward the Target store. We have unconfirmed reports that three people are dead. We know for sure that three people were taken to the hospital. One person is in critical condition. The other two people are not critical according to the police scanners the shooter was shot and is in custody there is no information on his condition we spoke to a couple of people who were inside target when the shooting started they described the scene as mass chaos we were in the mall i was getting a tent and we were in the candy department and then this woman's like run run the, there's someone shooting and then we heard five shots go off and then we all just started running out to the exits. The next time I heard people were screaming and yelling and I look up and people are just running and crying and I started to step out into the aisle and like two people just like knocked into me, knocked me to the ground and someone held me up and said you need to get out of here, someone's shooting. According to witnesses, there are still people inside the mall. Many were hiding or just trying to get out of the line of fire. Again, here is what we know. We have three unconfirmed reports. We have unconfirmed reports, that is, that three people are dead. Three people are injured, one critical, two non-critical. Again, according to police scanners, the shooter was shot. We have no information on his condition. Of course, we will stay here and try and bring you the latest information as soon as we get it. 24 hours ago, the spot where I'm standing was the middle of someone's living room. Now nothing. The entire second floor of this home is gone. Their belongings now scattered throughout the neighborhood here in Miller Ranch. 30 homes were destroyed. But we are hearing incredible stories of survival and gratitude that no one here was hurt. Up this hilly road in the Miller Ranch neighborhood, residents are in a state of shock, trying to grasp the reality of the nightmare they just lived through. It's just really a total disaster. 87-year-old Doris Beckenhauer and her 92-year-old husband took cover in their basement as the storm approached. Just one big bang. The clothes that hang in their closet are now visible through a gaping hole of what's left of their home. 30 years together in this house and 65 years of marriage, a lifetime's worth of mementos and memories swept away in the blink of an eye. A lot of, of things that we just will never be able to replace. All across the neighborhood, residents start the monumental task of cleaning up. First spotted the Beckenhauser's next door neighbor, Dwayne Evans. He was so overwhelmed, he didn't know what to do. It's very devastating, as you can see, it's, it's unbelievable. Evans' wife was upstairs in the bedroom when the storm hit. The roof just above her tore off, leaving her with cuts and bruises. Dwayne was in the basement. It snatched me off the couch. I mean, that's what, and I, I couldn't understand that until I realized that the chimney is missing. Trees from their neighbor's yard are now in pieces in their backyard. The Evans clothes and other belongings are scattered everywhere. I really don't have any words. I mean, you can look at this and this is nature. I don't, I don't have any words to, to say. Visit the Shocking Prices store in Independence and you'll find security cameras throughout the store. When he installed them, the owner never imagined these cameras would catch such a bold crime. At first glance, it may look like this man is setting this TV outside the Shocking Prices store for a customer. But the man isn't a store employee. He's a thief. So I would have never thought somebody would do that in broad daylight. The theft happened in the afternoon of March 27th. Security cameras catch a man and a woman walking into the store. The man walks to the back to check out the televisions. He decides on this 46-inch Vizio Plasma worth more than $1,200. But instead of paying, he unplugs the TV and walks right out the back door. He had just enough room once he snuck through here that nobody could see him because all those coats were on there. When he walked out the door, assistant manager Dwayne Simmons heard the security alarm beep. 
When he started toward the door, Simmons says the man's accomplice started distracting him. So I was checking her out and she was asking me these, these different goofy questions. Shocking Price's liquidation store is a mom and pop shop. The owner, John Alavarez, says they were also recently the victims of a $6,000 check scam. It just upset to me because I can't afford to be losing this kind of money and stay in business. Alavarez put up pictures of the suspect at the front of his store, along with a sign that reads, Do you know these idiots? I'll tell you what, they are. Uh, you would think that they go out and find a job instead of doing this. This is risky stuff. If you recognize any of these suspects, you are asked to call the Independence Police Department. Live in Independence, Marissa Cleaver, NBC Action News. Graffiti, stolen cars, and armed robberies, those are just some of the increasing crimes happening here on 23rd Street in Western Independence. The sudden rise in crime has business owners frustrated and ready to fight back. We have just been under siege with problems on the 23rd Street corridor. Elisa Breitenbach owns Little Bits just off of 23rd Street in Independence. She says thieves have taken a lot of her time. They just literally terrorized us. It was when we first arrived. We've been broken to once and I've had graffiti twice. Breitenbach talked to other nearby business owners and realized they had a big problem. Broken into, glass busted out. Uh, you know, register destroyed. Jim Keller owns 23rd Street Tanning, also hit by thieves. There's no large corporation can just write a check to, to bail out the problems. You know, these are these are small business owners that are feeling this. A couple blocks away is Rachel Johnson's store, Bowen African Imports. Robbers ripped off hundreds of dollars worth of clothes. Later, a customer threatened to pull a gun on her. Now she's installing security and surveillance. And I'm scared. I'm here all the time by myself. From the American Factory Direct Furniture Store to Church's Chicken, crime hit nearly every business along 23rd Street in Independence, up more than 30% in the past year. We hardly have any police officers. Breitenbach says more patrolling would help, and so can she. She's formed the Independence Business Crime Task Force. We're going to make this place a lot safer and better and bigger and badder, so I'm glad. <laughs> A spokesman for the Independence Police Department says they are stepping up patrols in the area and they are also using something called Wolf Pack. That's when their special response team and volunteer officers all concentrate in one area.